Hey, this is Glendon Cameron. Be sure to get my free audiobook, The Hustler's Mindset, Pimping Your Mind for Success. It's right there. It's right there. Get it. Get it. Get it. And uh, with that, I got a serious ass rant for you today about the internet lifestyle. Yeah, that bitch. For real. What's going on, G-Verse? I had a very interesting experience today. Very, very freaking interesting. When you're an internet marketer or a person that makes money online, people tend to marginalize what you do. Someone put out that I pretend to play in front of the computer. Understand, I haven't missed a credit card payment, hadn't missed paying for where I live, there's always gas in the vehicle. I eat out literally every day. <laughs> I try to work on that. And um, there's this, this whole thing. And I'm, I'm doing this video for you. Let you know. Because there are many of you who want to do what I do. And I'm going to give you some of the negatives of being an internet marketer. And I'm not going to do numbers because I, you know, this is just an off-the-cuff video. Didn't really plan on doing it, but I just like, what the hell? Number one, when you do this, and understand, I've done this for five years. And if you count the eBay, Amazon, as other stuff, it goes back to 1999. Then I've been making money online in some form or fashion, Craigslist, whatever. People are incredulous that you make money online. It's just like... It's almost like some kind of pipe dream. It's very real. It's a matter of systems and working hard. Another thing you run into is rampant jealousy. The jealousy is going to be there the more successful you become. When you're starting out and you're not making any money, people are actually going to laugh at you. They're going to tell you that you should put your energy and efforts into some other vehicle. They'll talk about you. They'll laugh, they'll play. My own mother, for five years, was like, what you really mean to tell me is you still don't have a job. You will get that. My own mother can't, it took her years to come around to it. So you, you get the incredulous, but the jealousy makes people say things. They, they say they're real spiteful because I'll tell you, um, unless I got a major, major project going on, and for the last few months I've had major, major projects going on, but when I don't have major projects going on, I work two to four hours a day, if that. And most of that would be when I'm writing, you know, because I try to write every day. Sometimes I fall down and go boom. But if I'm writing every day, that's an hour, two hours. Then marketing is, and the thing is, for five years, I've worked so hard to build this platform. And it's kind of like if you started a store, once you have the store built, customer base built, it doesn't take that much to manage. So I'm not doing the four hour, the Tim Ferriss four hour work week, but I'm closer than the average person. Uh, when I, like I said, no major projects going on, no new developments, 20 hours a week, if that. So, and my income sometimes even goes up during those periods. And what people don't really understand is when you do your internet business, and you go for what I call long-term results, long-tail money. You know, what I do, I'm not doing for today. I'm doing for tomorrow. And I'll tell you, you're watching this YouTube video, right? It's not my new videos that make me the money. It's videos I made in 2010, 2011, 2012. Those are the ones that make me the most money. So if you have a YouTube channel, you've got a video that's doing really well, don't remove it. You don't know what's going to happen. I had... Uh, there's like 10 videos that make most of my YouTube money. 10. And there was one that was kicking the ass, the other one, and those two have flipped positions. I don't know why they flipped positions. I don't know if YouTube did something or whatever, because I just pretty much let them go. But those 10 videos make up 90% of my AdSense income. The rest contribute pennies. But because there's so many, <laughs> it's a good penny. So part of making money online is positioning your website your business for long-term growth. I'm not a churn and burn person. Like, get in there, ride this trend, do this stuff, get money real quick, then get out. I'm not that guy. 
I'm here for the duration. You know, that's why I do so many extremely long videos. Because in the beginning, everyone's like, your videos are too long, your videos are too long, your videos are too long. Then last year, YouTube went out that longer videos is what they're looking for and because it gets more traction. Because anyone can put up a two minute video or a three minute video or a four minute video. But how many people can put up a video that's 30 freaking minutes long, 40 minutes long, and have a 50% watch through rate where 50% of the people that see the video watch it from beginning to end? That's pretty special. That's pretty special. If you're familiar with website website bounce rates, a lot of websites, people come in and this is not what I want, they're gone. My bounce rate for this channel is remarkably low. So that goes back to building something long term because the thing is, I, I feel fortunate to have been successful in the physical world because a lot of the things that make you successful in the physical world will make you successful online if you adapt and modify some of those things. And other things will actually make you fail. So I had to divest, divest myself of certain mindsets, adopt new mindsets, and do a little bit of alchemy to put stuff together. But essentially, when you become an online person, many people who are not successful will bash you, will talk about you, will try to compete with you, will rip you off. Uh, if you're doing something, they will adopt it immediately and claim it as their own. So, you know, and then the thing with other people that you know, how they talk about you. There are people out there who are making a million bucks a year doing eBay only. I think they're crazy because <laughs> any day eBay can go, eh, eh, eh. no more money for you. But there are people doing seven, eight figures just using eBay. And there's people doing seven, eight figures doing Amazon, FBA, Amazon. So... There's a lot of money to be made online if you position yourself correctly. And part of positioning yourself correctly is not allowing the noise of people who can't be successful. And the reason that people aren't successful online isn't, isn't it's not an intellect problem. That's the big thing. It's like, oh, that's, no, no, no. They don't want to work that hard. That's the problem. It's a work ethic problem only. Because say you're not that smart, right? I believe in Asian philosophy. I believe you can get smart. And that's the thing. Like these YouTube videos, my first year, few years on YouTube, I had a crappy camera. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. You will learn from experimentation and exploration. You will learn nothing from sitting on the sidelines thinking, well, I'll do it someday. So if you're going to do this, you, you should know that if you do it well, you will be hated. People will be jealous of you. People will talk about you. People will create problems for you because, I mean, for me to be in the position that I am and I don't have to work that hard anymore, it's a source of irritation to a lot of people. There's a group of you, you know, those of you in the G-verse, thanks for being here. You people appreciate me and you come back and you get fed from this channel and you keep coming back and coming back and you get it. And so I appreciate you. There's another group. They must have some magic jelly beans. Or or the best one, I found a storage unit with like five million in it, and that's how I've been living. And I've just been totally bullshitting everybody. And it's it's real funny. I had this consult the other week, last actually a few days ago. Monday, in fact. And it was amazing. Because the person is a true hustler, a true business person, and you know, people like I charge too much. His exact value after the fact was there was great value in talking to you and we're going to have another session next month. Because, you know, just long story short, I started 10 businesses and the first five were failures, massive failures. But from each one of those failures, I learned something and I took it with me going forward. And it got to the point where I stopped failing. But see, the thing is, if you're failing, you're learning. But many people become so demoralized, desensitized, disenfranchised because they fail because we're in a society of, I'm not number one, you ain't shit. That's a misnomer. That That is really bad advice. You can eventually become number one if you keep working at it. And also, if you start a business and your original premise doesn't pan out, you may learn something from starting that business that will start a better, more profitable business. 
But so many people are looking for shortcuts or turnkey solutions or some type of magic jelly bean or some type of lucky charms or the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And it's not out there. You know, you have everything you need to be successful. You just have to go forward with it and keep going forward and keep going forward and keep going forward and keep going forward. Keep going forward. Because it's out there. I mean, I support myself strictly from my internet business strictly I had a chance to do some outside stuff but I didn't want to because when I was in the store trucking business I worked really hard really really hard and I kinda let certain parts of my life go and you know after my partner died I just was a different dude so to speak certain things are just not as important to me as they were before and you know it's about living a life of design intent and freedom and when you're talking to people who don't have that kind of freedom. What I present to them is this thing that eats at them and creates resentment. I'm a college dropout, not a high school dropout, college dropout. No GED for me, you know, I, I did get my diploma. Actually, I did pretty well in high school, honestly. I think a good high school education is probably better than a good college education because that's foundation I mean you know your primary school middle school if you get a quality education from first grade up to high school you're probably going to be okay whether you go to college or not and if you go to a crappy school or you don't do what you need to do in high school because I killed the SAT I <laughs> knocked that bitch out and you understand that if you are smart and you work on getting smarter success is assured it really is. But with this internet lifestyle and making money and having freedom to come and go as you want to, you know, an another thing is people don't think you work like uh, at all. That you just kind of sit around and pretend to work. And for some reason, every week or every month, wherever you get paid, something comes in your inbox like, you got paid. It's payday today. And your disbursement from CreateSpace, blah, blah, blah. You get all that stuff, right? And it's kind of funny. It, it, it is really, really funny. And another thing about doing this is you get to pick and choose who you want to work with. In the beginning, not so much. You got to get some numbers, build your business, do these things so you can then get to that position. But it's amazing how many people sell themselves short come up with all types of excuses to actually identify a problem that doesn't exist because I'm telling you like if you haven't noticed I'm black I didn't go to African American even at an early age all that stuff to me just my opinion was silly because who you are and what you be and what you become will be more so based on your efforts and your contribution to the world more so than you're a black guy, a white guy, an Asian guy, whatever. It's who you are that emanates from your core that will dictate the type of life you have. And you know, I've had friends who are also black who kind of disagree with me. That's like the system is stacked, blah, blah, blah. No, it's not. Many people don't even know the rules of the system. If you go back to the movie, The Matrix, inside The Matrix, there were several sub matrices that people were running if you remember the guy that made the woman have the orgasm because he you know put something in her digital drink he was running that you remember the guy with the keys he was running that so inside the matrix if you know the rules of the matrix you can create your own subset matrix or as I like to say creating your own economy inside this larger economy if you know the rules and a lot of people don't pay attention to the rules don't know the law this is the United States of America it's governed by law rule of law that's very very important very very important to know those things and if you learn that stuff you can be amazingly successful based on your definition of success notice I said your definition of success there's someone watching this video that if they had a house that was paid for a car that they wanted paid for they're retired that's all they want they just want a comfortable cozy life and based on what's here in the world, you can get that amazingly fast. And amazingly fast is within five years. You can get that. 
I don't have a house anymore because I don't want to deal with the upkeep and the cutting of the grass and paying the lawn, man. I don't, I don't even want to deal with that stuff. I'm perfectly happy to pick up the phone, pff, this, and someone else handles that. That works for me. It may not work for you, but right now that works for me. Because it's like I said, it's just me. <laughs> you know, I don't need all this. But you can be amazingly successful with what's out there right now. Another thing that happens when you're an online person. People will act like boo-boo the fool when you try to explain what you do. Someone put in one of my groups like, when you meet people, uh, what do you tell them when you do? I just tell people I'm an author. I don't even get into it. I don't even, it, it's too much because they're like, all right, what do you do? I've uh, written 14 books. I've got a YouTube channel with 3 million views, 10,000 plus subscribers. I've got a Facebook group and i got Hustler University and then i got the Hustler Mind. You know, they're like, what, what are you doing? What, what, you're doing too much. Too, my, my brain is overheating. This, I just can't understand. Really? Do you have a job? It sounds kind of like hocus pocus. It's, uh, hmm. Essentially, when you run into that is you've just given this person some concepts that their brain can't wrap itself around because if it's not about getting in the vehicle and going to a job and getting a paycheck every week, every two weeks or once a month, that doesn't compute for them. It doesn't compute for them. There are many of you out there, you, you and you, and you, y'all you, are way smarter than I am. But the reason that I'm sitting in this chair doing this video and you're at your job or watching this on your phone in the gym when you get off from your job is you haven't committed yourself to your own personal success. You haven't made that commitment to yourself. You may want it. You may have some plans drawn out. You may even have some goals set. It, but you haven't made that commitment. It's not there. You, you like, if there's a party this weekend, I'm going to this party. When you might need to be writing on it, working that book, or you might need to be um, out hustling. You might need to be making sales. You might need to be making product. You're like, I deserve it. I worked 40 plus hours and for the man. I deserve two days to do nothing. You're selling your future short. I want you to understand. I was in the storage auction business. Did very well. Got sick. And uh, got forced out. Partner developed cancer. She passed on. I felt a little weird about getting back into it. And like I said, a lot of stuff in me changed. So essentially, in July 17th, 2009, I made a decision to become a writer. No training. Just... And the first effort wasn't that good. Second effort, third effort, fourth effort. Do you see the trend here? Fifth effort. It's called not giving the fuck up. Sixth effort. To the point that I write stuff that I sit back like, did I write that? <laughs> you know, in the beginning, you know, it was just very, very elementary. You know, and then, you know, because I was afraid to really put my heart into it. Because typically, if you have writer's block, it's not writer's block, it's a fear block. You're scared of putting down what you really want to put down because you're afraid of being judged at some point. And uh, my advice to you is do a pen name and put that shit out anyway. So, essentially, you can become really successful if you make that commitment. And it, that's, the commitment is super, super important. It, it may be the most important thing that you do for your business and for yourself because I don't get ticked like I used to. I'll tell you, I was dating someone and this was uh, the first year. First year, this woman asked me not once, not twice, not three times, not four times, but five times if I was making a living from writing books five times didn't matter that you know I had a BMW didn't matter that I never talked about being broke didn't ma nope 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 she was an attorney could not wrap her mind around what I mean it was just like really you sure you ain't bullshitting me I got my side out on you I mean just that you will be examined and exhumed and just being able to support yourself pay your bills and live a good life Mm -mm, they ain't enough. <laughs> they ain't enough. You have to be balling for people to really respect what you do. Because like I said, I don't make as much money as I was when I was in the storage auction business. 
But since I don't have the warehouse, the trucks, the staff, the, I don't need as much. And that's another thing. I have made my relationship with money very personal and different that as long as enough comes in to keep me free, I'm good. And I'm free right now. Free to come and go as I please. Except like, you know, this Sunday, major projects happen. <laughs> so I don't know about too much freedom there, but it's coming. You mean it's 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 coming. Well, essentially, let me just say when I'm doing a project, I'm working a lot. But when there's no project, if I wanted to take off for a week and just bullshit, I could. If I could take off for two weeks and bullshit, I could. My income would go down a little bit, but my bills still get paid and I still have a little pocket change. You know what I'm saying? A little pocket change to blow, a little, little, little flow to blow. And I'm enjoying that because for me, this is quasi-retirement. Go and come as I please, do what I want, work where I want. It's quasi-retirement because I don't, you know, if you see my video, I don't really plan on like official, I don't go nowhere to do nothing in retirement because I live in a really nice neighborhood and I know something about the elderly in this neighborhood. Most of them were business owners or high level professionals. They all continue to do something. They don't have to, but they do to keep this sharp, to keep this sharp. Uh, I went for my life insurance exam today because I'm changing my policy. And, uh, you know, I'm 47 for those who didn't know. It was just like, based on some recent events, I came out of there like heart's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's good to go. No diabetes, none of that stuff. And, you know, it was just like, hmm. Because I ain't stressing myself out like I did when I had certain occupations. So that's another benefit. And the thing is, you know, it's just be careful what you ask for. Because I asked for this and I will take all the slings and the arrows and the rocks and grab some little bitches and throw them back, you know, because my kung fu is better than your kung fu. But you have to understand that you will be treated differently than you've ever been treated in your life when you start doing this. And you start to gravitate towards other internet people. Those become your best buds, they become your friends. And, you know, you start hanging out with them, you know, because they understand. Because understand, there's not that many of us. Yeah, you hear it's like, yeah, I got the internet business. But when you really look at the number of people who strictly make their money online, it's a small group of people. There's some people who make side money and those get thrown into this category, you know, and I want to create some separation. You know, I make 100% of my income from online sources. 100%. I drive an X5. It's a V8. It's 68 to 73 dollars to fill that bad boy up whenever, you know, Thor gets low on petrol. Every time I pull over to fill up, I fill up. I don't put like 10, 20, 30 bucks in there. I fucking fill up. And we roll. So understand, you can do this if you can get past the fear. Because many of you know what will happen. Like I had a friend who, who would be great at this. And I don't want people talking about it. And that's something else too. You're going to get people you don't even know who will talk about you like a dog. Like, well, that Glendon doing this and he doing that and that motherfucker. I don't even know this person. <laughs> I don't even know this. Never met him. Never did anything. And there's, there's like, oh my God! I had the uh, book bench incident. For the older viewers, you'll know that there was the people that was copying the Glendon 007 using zeros and imitating me and answering comments, every positive comment. They'd be like, "Fuck you!" And you know, your mother sucks crack. Uh, madness. Other madness. And I'm telling you, I enjoyed it because every morning I woke up I was like, "What the hell's gonna be in my inbox?" You start looking online like. <sighs> What is this going to be? What, what is, what's going to happen today? And you got to have fun with this. But there are so many vehicles for you as a person to create a living, a living wage from online work. Whatever a living wage for you may be. It could be 30000 It could be 150000 It could be 300000 It is possible online. Totally possible. Totally possible. And you have to be malleable. You, you really have to be able to go with the flow like you know I was going to do these paid YouTube channels and I set the thing out and you know just for you new people I do a ton of experimentation experimentation exploration yields data 
data yields better decision making ability. And you know, it was on the paid channel, and I looked at it, and I looked at it, and I looked at it, and I put it out there. And then a lot of you were like, We don't like that. Boo, we don't like that bullshit. Boo. But you know, my personal channel, my paid channel, from my group, people like that. And once again, I'm not afraid to fail. That's something else. If you're gonna do this internet thing, get used to failing. You're gonna fail more than you will succeed. So what does that mean to the person who's initiated to have a bit higher elevated thought process? You need to do as much shit as possible because let me give you the ratio. Say, you know, my, when we were selling on eBay, uh, originally our sell through rate pretty much was 20, 25% month in, month out. So if we put up a thousand items, we sold 200. Now, if you were an involved person, what do you do with that information? Well, if I put up 2,000, that's 400 items. If I put up 3,000 items, that's 600 items. If I put up 10,000 items, that's 1,000 items. Your sell-through rate stays the same, but if you increase your scale, your money doesn't. Everything goes up. Your infrastructure costs go up. Your fees go up. But so does your profit if you're doing it right. And there are many people like, oh, God, you know, if I'm, they crank it down versus cranking it up. Because when I got that information, my partner, I mean, we were listing shit. I mean, I, you know, it was like, risk was like, <sighs> I mean, you ever type so much, your, your form swells up. Because we had like a power listing day. Because, you know, I see people on YouTube talking about, they can only list like, you know, five, ten things. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? I remember listing 50 to 60 items a day by my damn self. My partner was doing the same. You create a system. You do the pictures first. You do the descriptions. And you do activities in groups. You create a process. And boom, boom, boom. You knock it out. If you just like, I'm going to take a picture. You know, write a description. Then I'm going to post it. You're being highly fucking inefficient. You really are. But with eBay's new limits, you may not be able to post that much anyway. But the whole point is, going back to my console. Because I've been through so many situations with this internet business, eBay, Amazon, that it's very rare that someone can ask me a question I don't have the answer to. And if I don't have the answer, I can go through my network and get that answer within 24 hours or less. That's strong. I don't care if you like me, hate me, whatever. That's fucking strong because I am now not Yoda. I'm Boda. You know, call me Boda, right? Uh, I can sit back and look at your business with a totally objective eye and I've also been in your seat position from the guy who just got started selling shit out of the garage to the guy that had a, not one warehouse but two one ten thousand square feet yeah another one was six and I'll talk about why I had that other one later actually it's in one of the videos but you know sixteen thousand square feet of space three trucks my Latino brothers and a lot of stuff. So I was that like you sitting at home, putting shit up on eBay, putting shit up on Amazon, and you know, like, it, you know, Sundays used to be the good day for us when I was doing it. I remember one Sunday we sold 120 items. Was happy as shit. Do you know it took us three days to get that shit shipped? That day made us revamp our whole inventory process because it was like, oh, we gotta find this. You gotta do this. And what we did, because you have to make sure you're accurate, because when you have similar items and different sizes, it's very easy to send the wrong person. That happened. I'll be honest. We did my partner did. We both we like sent people the wrong shit. And the thing is, if you do that, contact them first and be like, I'm really sorry. Uh, one time I sent something to a guy. He had to send it back, and I had to send it to the other guy. And I'm on the phone. This is when eBay lets you talk to people. I'm like, hey, you know, I'm really really sorry. I screwed up. I'm really sorry. And what was real funny. Both of these items were over 500 bucks, and both of those people were nice as shit. They were just like, things happen, thanks for calling me. Let both of them have positive feedback, and I totally screwed up. Totally. I just like, it's on me. It's on me. And um, that didn't happen. Then other times, you can get somebody that gets an item for five bucks, and they will fucking blaze you. <laughs> I still don't understand that. I have never had anybody with a high value item that was accurate, that was what I said, do that type of stuff. But all that cheap shit, oh my God. I mean, it was funny. But the whole thing is, you know, 
experimentation exploration because you know when I sit here people don't watch videos and they talk about you know I'm like you ain't selling a lot when you are selling 2,000 items a month when you're selling 3,000 items a month you have to have a fulfillment process you have to have an inventory you have to have this stuff or your business will not function right there's no way that you deal with it you deal and you know when we were really rolling we we're doing uh, 6,000 items a month across several eBay IDs it was, you know, that's it. It was a nightmare at one point. <laughs> it was a nightmare. At one time, one computer crashed. They had all the information on it. It was a nightmare. I had to hire someone. I had to pay this guy five hundred bucks to fix that shit like that. He he had to transfer the hard drive to another computer, and he got it done in about four hours. But we we lost a lot of time in four hours, and that's why you know when I hear this stuff on YouTube and people talking about their business, I was like, you ain't selling that much. Because when you sell a lot, you run into issues that you have to solve. You have to solve. So definitely, you know, you can make a lot of money doing this stuff. And that's why I recommend, and this is coming from me, the guy that hates eBay. I used to love eBay. eBay used to be my best BFF until I got bent over. You do eBay, eBay Valet. You do Amazon, Amazon FBA. Yeah, you give up a lot in terms of gross. But... When you think about it, you don't have to buy boxes. You don't have to buy bubble wrap for that stuff. You don't have to ship it. And better believe that they're going to frequent that stuff in their algorithm much higher than they're going to frequent your stuff unless you're a, a top tier seller. That's another reason they use that. Uncle G just gave you something and a lot of people keep ignoring it. It's like, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. You know, I'm going to get quick math. All right, do eBay Valley, right? So you send a thousand dollars worth of stuff that sells, okay? You're gonna get like six something and some change um, when it's all said and done. What do you do with that information? All right, quiz time, boys and girls. I just gave you the answer a few minutes ago. You know, you, know, you have to rewind the video. Okay, you got numbers. Okay, so we need to send two thousand dollars worth of stuff. That's twelve hundred bucks. Then we need to send three thousand dollars worth of stuff. That's eighteen hundred bucks. You see where I'm going with this? Instead of bitching and moaning, because I got this saying, don't hate the player, don't hate the game, learn the fucking rules so you can win. And those are the rules, and if you play by them and you get your inventory cheap enough, you can absorb that stuff and still make money and not work as hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is how this internet thing works. I'm telling you, I watch videos and see I'm giving these tips and stuff deep in the video because I know everyone doesn't watch it. But there are people who watch and it's like, damn, I watched that whole thing and I got some jewels. I've, I'm famous for dropping some serious knowledge at the end of a video. Serious. Or I'll put a piece here, then 10 minutes later I'll put a piece here, then 10 minutes later I'll put a piece here. Because this is chess, motherfucker, not, check, not checkers. So understand that you can do this. You can do this. And the time to do it is now. Because what did I just say? It's not that many people doing this. If at this point in the game, five years later, I'm still looking as an outlier, an anomaly. It's not that many people doing it. If you go to uh, seller groups and look at the numbers of the groups. If you're a member of 10 groups, right? Most of them top out around 2,000 people. And if there's six, eight thousand people, understand most of the folks of that six and eight thousand are part timers. You can ten groups. It's like say it's just just throw a number, say fifty thousand people in all ten groups collectively. Out that ten thousand, only ten percent. No, fifty thousand. Only ten percent are hardcore sellers, or less. I joined the group and I talked to the group moderator and I said, "What well, is the experience level of these people?" Because some of the questions they were asking, and it wasn't me being a Dick. It was just me like, I want some information because I'm like, uh, this is eBay 101.AB. And, you know, I'm not begrudging these people because everyone had to be a beginner. But you're not going to get good at this stuff, whether it's eBay, Etsy, Amazon, Amazon, without really putting forth a lot of effort. Because I see people who just sit back, they're like that dog at the dinner table waiting for a crumb to drop off the table. And they're like, all right. Versus going to the store, getting the ham, cooking the ham, and actually being the chef. <laughs> you, you get more options as the chef. If you're that dog on the floor, all you get is scraps. Arr! Be the chef. Make the ingredients. Create the recipe. So, that's my rant.
for today about making money online because like I said there's a lot of stuff that happens that people it's insulting and it's offensive it really is it's insulting and it's offensive that uh, someone would say that and it makes me think they're jealous very very jealous but that's just me could I be wrong? Possibly. Don't know. But going forward, we will find out. All right. This is Glendon, and I'll see you on the good side.